So this is how his 33mm indentation disappeared in 7 months without any surgery. What is pectus excavatum? Pectus means chest in Latin. Excavatum means sunken. Pectus excavatum means sunken chest. What's the cause of pectus excavatum? A doctor is probably going to give you an answer that it's idiopathic. Idiopathic means that the cause is unknown. Other doctors claim that pectus excavatum is hereditary, which means that it's in your genes. You can born with it or you can develop it later on in your life. Unusually, you can develop it by an accident, a surgery or by any injury, which interrupts the harmonic development of your breastbone and ribs. Harmonic development means that your breastbone and ribs grow at the same rate. The breastbone grows vertically while the ribs grow horizontally. In the case of pectus excavatum, the breastbone's growth was slower than the ribs, resulting in a sunken appearance. Explaining the root causes of pectus excavatum. Most people would think that all you need to do is to somehow elevate the sunken breastbone and the problem is solved. If it would be true, then the bars after a nurse surgery could be removed instantly or at least shortly. But that's not the case. For the nurse procedure to be successful, the bars need to be in for at least 3 years. That's why the elevation of the breastbone isn't the cure itself. It just enables the body to create the correct environment in the following three years so it will be capable to hold the sternum elevated. The correct environment has three elements. First, proper amount of intrathoracic pressure. Second, proper amount of abdominal pressure. And third, proper posture and no flaring ribs. What is intrathoracic pressure? Each time you inhale, you draw air into the lungs. The deeper breath you are able to take, the higher the intrathoracic pressure will be. So more air equals to higher intrathoracic pressure, which means that your lungs are more inflated even in a neutral state. Let's go back to the nose procedure, where the breastbone is elevated by a bar. As the indent is gone, it enables the patient to draw more air into the lungs. More air equals to higher intrathoracic pressure, the lungs, which are more inflated now, able to hold the sternum in an elevated position. But building it up takes a long time if you don't target it directly. This is why the doctors recommend to have the bars in for 3 years so you hopefully develop the proper amount of intrathoracic pressure. But if you do specialized breathing techniques, then you can build it up much quicker. The second element of the correct environment is the proper amount of abdominal pressure created by the diaphragm muscle. If you have pectus excavatum, you more than likely breathe using your upper chest, which is called stress breathing. Normally, we only breathe like this in a stress response. It raises awareness creates tightness in the chest, shoulder and neck area. And in the long term, it creates a plethora of problems. Anxiety, high blood pressure, heart problems and many others. So you need to breathe in the correct and efficient way to avoid all of these and to build up both intrathoracic and abdominal pressure too. Your breathing is correct if you use the diaphragm muscle for breathing. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle located behind your lower ribs, right under your lungs. It attaches to the lower ribs and to the spine. When you inhale, this muscle flattens and the chest cavity enlarges, and this draws air into the lungs. When you exhale, this muscle turns back into dome shape and forces air out of the lungs. As you can see it in this animation, when you exhale, the diaphragm elevates and pulls the lower ribs in. When you aren't able to fully exhale, stale air gets trapped in your lungs, 
With the next inhalation, you can draw that much air into the lungs. This results in that your diaphragm gets shortened and start to sit lower and lower. It pushes against your lower ribs, which results in rib flare. So flaring ribs are actually the sign of improper breathing and also a sign of lacking abdominal pressure. The lack of abdominal pressure makes your body hard to enter into the parasympathetic rest and digest state, as the stress breathing keeps you in a fight or flight state. So your rest and digestion is worse, urination and bowel movement, but also limbic flow is created by proper abdominal pressure. So as you can see, this is much more than a simple aesthetic problem. I also believe that incorrect breathing might cause this, but definitely contributes to bad posture. When your ribs are flaring and you are stress breathing, this makes you to extend your spine into an unnatural position, so you could breathe easier. Your lumbar spine is put forward, creating an anterior pelvic tilt. Your thoracic spine gets rounded in compensation for your indentation, and your scapulas protract too. This creates a whole array of other problems, like elongated abdominal wall, as known as pot belly, which is a sign of lacking abdominal pressure, and other muscular imbalances too. So your bad posture might originate from your improper breathing and flaring ribs. But this doesn't mean that by simply breathing correctly would fix your posture too. You need to target your posture and other muscular imbalances specifically. If you reverse engineer this explanation, you can treat the root problems of pectus excavatum. How to fix the root causes of pectus excavatum non-surgically? If you are someone who don't want surgery, or you want to try an alternative method first, or you went through surgery but your chest regressed, then this part is for you. If you are someone who went through the nose procedure and you currently have the bars under your ribs, please stay, because you will still find a lot of valuable information here. First, you need to understand two basic laws. Wolf's Law Julius Wolf was a doctor, a surgeon, who defined this law. The bone tissue is a dynamic construction that can be modified according to exterior pressure. Davis Law Henry Gazette Davis was an orthopedic surgeon who defied this law, which is corollary to Wolf's Law. Ligaments or any soft tissue when put under tension will elongate by the addition of new material. On the contrary, if the soft tissue is in a loose state, will gradually shorten by removing the FAT material. In practical applications, dental braces, scoliosis braces and many others are based on these principles. How to fix sunken breastbone? So I've explained that someone who went through the nose procedure needs more intrathoracic pressure in order to keep the sternum elevated even after the removal of the bars. But you can elevate the sternum without an internal bar and I'm going to show you how can you do that. So first of all, I have to show you an exercise, which is standing ab rocking while you perform wall salva maneuver. For this exercise, you don't need anything, just your body. So now I'm going to show you once more. You put your hands together like this. You put your hands behind your head. You're inside your lungs. And you do an abdominal exercise like this. So you're creating an intrathoracic pressure that we need and you're stimulating your bones and cartilages, your chest's bones and cartilages. And this stimulus is what you need. Did you catch that how much his breastbone got elevated by doing this exercise? Let's take another look. So as you can see, by filling your lungs up as much as you can and doing a simple air rocking movement will elevate your breastbone.
You can also incorporate the Valsalva maneuver to your training exercises. For example, doing push-ups like this can elevate your sternum even further. But will it treat pectus excavatum? So when I talk about fixing the root problems, I am not pinpointing towards one exercise or equipment, but I want you to rather look at this as everything adds up to a whole, and that's going to be the solution. But to answer this question, in theory, it's possible. The problem is that you would need to do this exercise a lot, and still, it would probably take a lot of years to fully treat yourself with only doing this exercise. The best approach for this exercise is to spread it out for the whole day. Doing 5-10 minutes long sessions every hour or two would definitely yield more results than doing this exercise continuously for an hour. This needs a person who is really committed, but this exercise isn't the only thing what you can use to elevate your sternum non-surgically. In the 1970s, two surgeons, Dr. Louis Spitz and Dr. Fritz Lang, experimented with glass vacuum bell jars on people with pectus excavatum. This was unsuccessful due to the material of the bells. Fast forward to the 1990s, a German chemical engineer, Eckhart Klob, started to experiment with other materials. He created this rigid polyurethane foam bell in 1992. He used this bell to treat himself. This bell was connected to a hoover. He only made these type of silicone bells in 2004. Sadly, I couldn't find any before and after pictures of him. There is no documentation or study either, but I found these short clips. How old were you when you started your treatment? I think I was 30 six years old when I started my treatment, but I interrupted it for several years. Uh, I think I finished my treatment when I was uh, 46. Eckhart Klob was born in 1956. 1956 plus 36 is 1992. 1956 plus 46 is 2002. But according to him, it took three years of continuous use of the bell to treat his chest. This is bone. This is heart. As you can see, he still has a mild indentation and we don't know how severe his case was to begin with. Also, you can see that he didn't address other problems like flaring ribs and elongated abdominal wall. There is only one fully documented case, what I was able to find, where the person managed to fix his chest by specialized training and using a vacuum bell only as a medical device. His name is Mitya Martel, or as known as Tronklok from Reddit. When he started, his indent was 34 mm deep. In this chart, you can see his progression each month. In two years, his indent disappeared. He used a vacuum bell, what he created for himself. Which is unlike the silicone bells, a rigid bell. With silicone flaps to avoid leakage. Together with his own training routine, what he wrote a book about, with the name Flatten Your Chest. It's worth to read. I agree with most of his viewpoints and findings, although I came to some of the conclusions differently. It's also worth to mention that he didn't use a soft silicone vacuum bell with acrylic top, but a homemade rigid bell. There is a big difference between the two. Meanwhile, a soft silicone bell spreads out on your chest and pulls parts which shouldn't be pulled, a rigid, custom-made bell isn't spreading out, but lifts the sternum up to itself, doesn't pull parts which shouldn't be pulled, and much higher negative pressure can be achieved. Also, don't forget that Eckhart Klopp himself used a rigid bell with a hoover to treat his chest. And this is the reason why I create rigid bells for my clients too. 
There is a comprehensive study on vacuum bells which encompasses 13 English language articles published until February 2019. Author Turk Torak J with the name of Vacuum Bell Is it a useful innovative device for Pectus Excavatum correction? Link in the description. Results indicate varying degrees of improvement, with 37 to 90% of patients showing improvement in sternum depth and 10 to 40% achieving excellent correction. Factors influencing treatment efficacy include frequency and duration of the vacuum bell application, patient age, gender, pectus excavatum severity, and differential pressure of the suction cup. Complications such as mild chest pain, skin discoloration, and petechiae are reported, but they are generally temporary and well tolerated. 10 to 40% of excellent correction doesn't sound too appealing. The biggest problem is that vacuum bell manufacturers just sell you a bell and you receive no training plan, no coaching and checkups. The vacuum bell is just a tool. It enables you to create the correct environment in order to treat your chest deformity. Don't get me wrong, it's an excellent tool. It's capable of stretching muscles like the intercostal muscles, transversus thoracic and levatores costarum. These muscles surround your sternum and ribs and stretching these are really hard to do on your own, but the vacuum bell makes it fast and easy. Stretching these muscles makes your chest wall soft and flexible and ready to be reshaped. The remodeling of Strongclock's chest was driven by his strict training program. As you can see, in two years he made a very impressive physique, besides that he fixed his pectus excavatum. So his chest was actually treated by a combination of the vacuum bell and the specialized training, not just the vacuum bell alone. In comparison with the bar, what they use with the nose surgery, the vacuum bell is a temporary lift, while the bars are constantly keeping your sternum elevated. Similarly to dental braces, the permanent dental brace is like the nose bar, while the temporary dental brace is like the vacuum bell. We know that both works, but we also know that permanent braces work better because they work 24-7 against your crooked teeth. With the vacuum bells, you have to put more emphasis into the training to compensate for its temporary nature, and also you need to address every other root cause too. Also, it's a smart idea to combine it with other alternative methods, like bracing for rib flaring, so they together create a synergistic effect. How to fix rib flare? So I've explained that flaring ribs are the sign of improper respiration and you need to use the diaphragm muscle for breathing. For this, you can find many exercises online. Most of these exercises are actually good, but I want to show you the two most effective one. So as you know, when your ribs are flaring, you aren't able to fully exhale. The following exercise will teach you how to fully exhale and inhale properly and also forces you to engage your abs, especially your obliques, when you are breathing. We're going to exhale through our mouth and get all the air out. And as we do that, we're going to feel ourselves peel off the wall and flex more. And we're going to feel our abs engaged, particularly on the side at the end of that exhale. We're going to hold that, put the tongue on the roof of the mouth at the end of the exhale. And we're going to keep the tongue on the roof of the mouth as we inhale. And then we're going to exhale again, keeping that right arm reach. Now the goal is to maximize the pause, the amount of time between the exhale and the inhale with the tongue on the roof of the mouth before you have to inhale again. Interestingly, this exercise also elevates the intrathoracic pressure too, helping your breastbone to come up. The next exercise is focusing on your obliques. It's a variation of the side plank, but with focused breathing. So to initiate this, Trevor is going to push through the ground. He's going to go up and he's going to feel probably a little bit turned towards the left side, the downside left side there. So as he breathes in through his nose and out through his mouth, he's going to feel his left side abs engage more because they're working to hold him up here. But as he inhales, he's going to feel his right side open up a little bit. 
and he's just going to maintain that position as he goes through sets of breaths here. The obliques are really elongated on people who has a rib flare. So every side ab exercise helps to improve your flaring ribs. Severe cases can take a really long time to improve with only exercises. Let me show you a bracing method, which not only capable of treating your rib flare, but also capable of elevating your sternum too. In 1977, a Brazilian orthopedist, Dr. Sidney Hodge, developed the dynamic remodeling method, where he used external braces on pectus excavatum and carinatum patients. Until his sudden death in 2012, in 35 years, he treated more than 5,000 patients with chest deformities. In 2009, he wrote a study with the name Orthopedic Approach to Pectus Deformities, 32 Years of Studies, link in the description. He used custom-made external compressive braces to treat his patients and 27 to 60% of them achieved excellent correction. The author states that proper training protocol is essential for achieving excellent results. The only complication was skin irritation and skin discoloration, which is mild and disappears on its own. Dr. Sidney Hodge's son, Dr. Davi P. Hodge, continued his father's legacy. In 2021, he also wrote a study with the name Broad Pectus Excavatum Treatment, Long-Term Results of a Brazilian Technique, link in the description. In this study, only Pectus Excavatum patients were included, 13% of them with mild deformity, 66% of them with moderate deformity and 24% of them with severe deformity. The success rate varied from 33% to 72%, depending on the severity, the frequency of the training and the overall compliance for the method. For those whose treatment wasn't successful, mainly had problem with compliance. Minor problem was that the patients didn't commit to the training. More common problem was that the patients didn't wear the devices. These braces are big and bulky and impossible to hide it under clothing. Dr. Sidney Hash himself said it in an interview that those who wear the devices over the clothing get better results because they end up using the braces more frequently. <laughs> I personally think that it's normal that if you don't want to show your treatment to the whole world. This is why I created a type of brace which is less than a centimeter thick at its thickest part and can be easily hidden even under a t-shirt. I call it the soft brace, but more about this later. The following examples are people who were treated by Dr. Sidney Hodge. A teenager boy managed to overcorrect his chest in 5 months with braces and vigorous training. To compensate for this, he had to wear another brace for his freshly developed carinatum. This overcorrection was corrected and the boy entered adult life with a healthy chest. A young patient was treated under a year. In this picture, a 29 years old patient was treated. The second picture is only two months after the first one. The whole treatment took 15 months. A 49 years old patient who was treated within eight months. This shows that age doesn't matter. An adult with a severe PE and a CT scan before and after. As you can see, his heart and lungs are no longer compressed. There are three unusual, interesting cases. This 20 years old patient had a nose surgery prior to bracing. He opted for this method because he still had an indent and flaring ribs too. This method was able to improve not just his flaring ribs, but his indent too. 
The next cases aren't about pectus excavatum, but a similar chest deformity, which is pectus arcuatum. This chest deformity has features of both excavatum and carinatum. Dr. Sidney Hash stated that this type of chest is the hardest to treat with braces as it seems to be the most rigid one out of all. Later, he combined the vacuum bell with his bracing and managed to fully treat a boy with pectus arcuatum. The two methods complement each other and even the most rigid deformities can be treated this way. And finally, I want to show you a guy who used the hash stripe braces and he posted his progression on Reddit. His name is Humpa Dinkle. This is him prior to any treatment. First day of using the braces. Eight months after the start. As you can see, his chest changed a lot. And not just his flaring ribs, but also his indentation is gone too. How to fix pot belly, lordosis, and overall your rotated pelvis. Your elongated abdominal wall and excessive lumbar curve comes from the same problem, your badly rotated pelvis. This problem is really complex and it comes with a lot of muscular imbalances. So as you know, your pelvis is rotated forward. This elongates your abdominal wall and deactivates your glutes and hamstrings on the back. On the other hand, this creates tightness in your hip flexors, quads and in your lower back too. In order to fix this, we need to strengthen the elongated muscles but also stretch the shortened ones. First, you need to stretch the hip flexors in order to open up the hips. We're gonna go into a slight posterior tilt. So you're gonna tilt your pelvis underneath your body. And then from here, brace your core like someone's about to punch you right in the stomach, squeeze your glutes like crazy. And then from right here, you're just gonna slightly lean forward, keeping your chest tall. Now right here, I can already feel a really good stretch in my right hip flexor. Then, you need to strengthen the glutes and hamstrings. With this exercise, you also have to brace your core too. You're gonna get into your natural bridge position. You're gonna push down through your toes, brace your core, lift up, squeeze your glutes as hard as you can. Notice I have a flat back right here. I'm not overarching, so I'm not anteriorly pelvic tilting. I'm here, up, squeeze my glutes, 10 second hold, 20 reps total, my glutes should be on fire, we're turning those on, and then back down. Something like this, 15 to 20 reps, maintaining that neutral position. So these exercises are great and will help you to improve your anterior pelvic tilt. But you might do certain things, unconsciously or passively, which will prevent you to improve your pelvic tilt. First, sitting too much. Second, footwear with heel elevation. And third, sleeping on a too soft mattress. Firstly, if you are still in school or you work in an office, you have to sit a lot. But you can actually improve the way you sit. Getting up every hour for a few minutes and just moving your legs and hips around can help a lot. Taking a small walk and doing some deep squats can even help more. You can also change your chair. Sitting on a big fitness or yoga ball can help to move your hips and its surrounding muscles more frequently as it constantly changes as you move even just a little. Secondly, you should avoid shoes which has heel elevation. Sadly, it's a hard thing to do as almost every designer shoes has more or less elevated heels. An elevated heel corrupts your posture and just that itself rotates your pelvis anteriorly. Look for zero drop shoes, which has flat soles. If you really want to fix your posture, your foot and toes, you should look for barefoot shoes, which has more space for your toes, so your whole foot can actually function as it should. Thirdly, we aren't evolved to sleep on these super soft spring mattresses. These only been around in the past hundred years or so. But in the previous 2 million years, humans actually evolved to sleep on a terrain which is as hard as soil. 
The problem with a soft mattress is that your muscles aren't able to fully relax. The slightest change you make while you sleep, the mattress changes with you. Because of this, your muscles aren't able to relax as they constantly have to adjust for the new position, even if you just slightly moved. On the other hand, if you sleep on a bed which is around as hard as soil, you will feel that your bones are holding you and keeping you in one position. Your muscles are able to fully relax, including your lumbar and thoracic spines curve, which will straighten the more you sleep on a hard surface. How to fix rounded shoulders, rounded back and forward head posture. Rounded back and shoulders are in correlation with your tight pectorals and front delts. Your pectorals are shortened and tight, together with your frontal deltoids. These pull your shoulder blades forward. Muscles around your scapulas got elongated and weak, rounding your upper back too. This rotation also forces your head to be more forward. In order to fix these issues, first you have to stretch the pectorals and front delts. This will open up the ribcage. I recommend to stretch your pecs, not just after every workout, but a couple of times throughout the day if you can. For this pec stretch, find a wall. Bring your arm up about 90 degrees and your elbow bent about 90 degrees. And then lunge forward with that same leg of the arm that's being stretched. And then from here, what you want to focus on is bringing this chest bone, the sternum, away from you as far as you can. You should feel a pull ideally in that front of the pec, this, this chest region right here. And then rotate as far as you can away without torquing your neck. And then return. The muscles stretch out quite easily, but the tendons and ligaments need more time. For this, I recommend to lay down on a foam roller or yoga block with your scapulas and elevate your arms above your head for 20 minutes every night before going to bed. It needs to be 20 minutes because the tendons and ligaments need that much time to stretch out fully. After opening up the thorax, you need to strengthen the weak and elongated rear deltoid and back muscles which surrounds your scapula. For this, you can find a lot of exercises, but I want to show you two what I found to be the most effective. First, it's a modified face pull, which targets everything around your scapula, including your lower traps. A raise of the arms at the top. So I get back here, and then I raise the arms up, and then I come back down. What this is doing is it's adding the lower traps to the equation here. We're already hitting almost everything in our back, the lower traps are really important for creating stability of the scapula as we raise our arms up over our head. So we don't want to ignore that. If we can build that in with a simple raise of the arms at the end here in holding isometrically in that back position, then why wouldn't we do it? Secondly, a shoulder routine which will give you a bulletproof rotator cuff. Step one, start with a resistance band loop across your wrist. Bend your elbows to 90 degrees and externally rotate to the side. Hold for three seconds. This engages your infraspinatus muscle of your rotator cuff to stabilize the joint. Step two, raise your elbows to a parallel position to the ground while maintaining tension on the band. Hold for another three seconds. This is a much more challenging position for your rotator cuff muscles to maintain external rotation torque and keep your forearms vertical. Step three, press your arms overhead and pull the band apart holding again for three seconds. This calls upon all the supporting muscles of your shoulder blade to engage. Then slowly return back to each prior step before getting back to the very first step and relaxing. As you can see it on this picture, besides the sunken breastbone, you have half a dozen other problems that need to be fixed. The Pectus Connect Us method. So as you can see, with the use of the braces and vacuum bell, together with specialized exercises, pectus excavatum can be treated without surgical intervention. But it's a really complex task to do. What I've presented to you previously is just a general explanation with a few exercises and I've showed you the original devices. But every chest deformity is different and need a different approach and devices. There are no devices which would fit them all, but also there aren't training programs which would be optimal for everyone. 
This is why I created the Pactus Connect Us method. There wasn't a company in this world where you could receive custom-made vacuum bows, braces, and specialized training program with coaching all together in one place. All this online, so you don't have to fly anywhere, and for a reasonable price, which makes it accessible even for those who live in developing countries. I use the advancement of technology, especially AI. I ask my customers to send me a set of pictures of their chest, and from those pictures I am able to create a 3D model of them. Then I use this 3D model to precisely create the custom-made vacuum bows and braces for them. But as you know that devices are just tools and you need to use them and you need specialized training to get rid of Pactus Excavatum for good. To achieve this, I assign my clients to a coaching app where they receive their daily training routines. I monitor their progression and compliance through this application. Because having excellent devices and training program doesn't mean everything. You have to use them correctly and do the training frequently in order to progress. So I brought everything together into one complete package where you don't have to think about anything, just follow instructions. This is the Pactus Connect Us method. And I have proof that my method is capable of improving Pactus Excavatum. In May of 2023, my first client started my method. 36 years old male with asymmetric pectus excavatum with a depth of 33 mm. This is him before any treatment. A short clip of him before any treatment. Here you can see him wearing the soft brace. And here you can see him wearing the vacuum bell. The latest hard brace design with a quick release mechanism. He took progression pictures every four weeks. As you can see, his progression was linear. You can see on these pictures how he changed month by month and eventually he reached a healthy chest with no indent by the seven month mark which was at the end of January 2024. As you can see, not just his chest, but his scoliosis also got resolved too. Here is a recent video of his chest. Currently, he is at around 40 weeks from the start. You can see that he doesn't pose to look better. He also haven't used the vacuum bell prior to this video shoot. This is his normal neutral state. As you can see, his indentation is gone. A short comparison video. In this angle, you can see how much his ribcage has changed. And from the side, you can see that other root problems, like his anterior pelvic tilt, lordosis and rounded shoulders has improved a lot. All this happened in 7 months. How was this so fast and effective? First of all, the custom made vacuum bell only covered his indentation and nothing else. And because it blends in with his body and it has a valve in it, so no tubing needed, he was able to wear it quite discreetly without it interrupting his life. Also, he was able to progressively increase the negative pressure to quite high levels, which increased efficacy. Secondly, the custom-made braces only push parts of his chest which needed to be pushed back. When he was at home and when he was training, he used the hard brace which is bulkier but really effectively pushing the flaring ribs. When he was at work or just outside, he was able to wear the soft brace discreetly under his clothing, which made his brace wearing time really high, 20 plus hours on average every day. He also took the training really seriously. He followed my instructions and did the training routines very frequently. So this matrix, the vacuum bell, the braces and the training was perfected for his specific condition. This is the reason why his progress was this fast and effective. 
If you have pectus excavatum or other type of chest deformity and you would like to try my method, drop me an email to pectusconnectus at gmail.com. Visit my website for more information, pectusconnectus.com. Thanks for watching.